All right, let's get started. Welcome to today's presentation. Our presentation is on a new way of monitoring marine ecosystem complexity. And we're lucky today to have a couple of presenters. First, we have Pete Reeve, who is our Aqualink co-founder. And then we have Zach Johnson, who's our solutions engineer at SoFar Ocean and who's been a part of countless Aqualink deployments. And then we also have Caesar here, who is our Aqualink community manager. Now, before we get started, just a couple housekeeping notes. Um, we will be answering questions at the end of the presentation, and you can do that by using the Q&A panel. I, saw, I believe it's on the bottom right-hand side. Um, and I also recommend that you, you submit them at any time. That way we can queue them up. Also, uh, just one other note too, is we will have a one question survey at the end, and it would really, really benefit us if you could uh, fill that out. And um, with that, let's hand it off to you, Pete. Well, cool. hey, uh, thanks, Todd. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm the um, co-founder and the CEO of, of Aqualink. Um, uh, my background is actually in um, entrepreneurship and, and primarily in clean energy. Um, I, my, my brother and I started a company called Solar City, which was one of the largest um, uh, uh, residential solar panel installers the country's ever seen. That got merged into um, Tesla Energy. And um, after spending some time at Tesla, um, left in part to start focusing on ocean technologies. And one of the things that I realized pretty quickly was that the tool set that was available um, for scientists uh, to monitor marine ecosystems um, was lacking, especially in the area of uh, temperature, which was you know, one of the biggest threats that we're facing um, in coral reefs and other marine ecosystems. So, you know, I spent some time um, going on some expeditions and realizing there's a couple of problems. The first was, you know, the actual real-time telemetry just was absent. And then the second was that all of the administrative work around surveying um, was, to, was, was being done in a very unstructured way. You know, like everybody is basically um, using Google Sheets and CSV files and they'll put them together and then kind of wrap them in a paper for a bit, but then the information is largely um, inaccessible. So we wanted to try to create a system that would allow somebody to be able to conduct surveys and then just monitor a marine environment on an ongoing basis. Um, so, you know, the first thing that we did is we funded a, we, we funded the deployment um, of a global sensor network, you know, so, so um, we funded about 150 um, spotter with smart mooring deployments. So these are essentially smart buoys, as many of you know, that are uh, collecting um, temperature information just below the surface as well as at the at the seafloor. Um, and it's sending that information a couple of times an hour through um, a satellite network. And this is giving us unprecedented access um, to, to real-time temperature um, information. But um, you know, so 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 far we've we've deployed about uh, sixty five of them are are currently deployed and actively running. Um, there are about uh, forty of them that are being um, that that are that that have been shipped and are just waiting for deployments. So we're, we're probably a couple of weeks away from having in excess of a hundred um, um, spotters installed um, throughout the world, broadcasting real time information. And we're excited to you know, kind of get to that milestone and also very grateful for, for all of you for, um, you know, participating in the program and also for the work that you're doing in um, helping to conserve um, the marine ecosystems throughout the planet. But, I, you know, it's, it's something that I wanted to be able to um, talk to everybody about today was, was you know, kind of what we're doing um, in, in Aqualink to kind of extend it to being a general purpose marine ecosystem management tool. You know, the focus on Aqualink in the first um, six months or so was really about, you know, deploying the spotters. Um, and now we're beginning to invest heavily in making the platform usable for all components of monitoring a marine ecosystem. So this is a class of software that if, if, if conserving the ocean was like, a, a, a big um, a big business. A lot of people would have, a lot of startups would have, would have sprung up and kind of created a great um, software environment that you know you would get charged for. But you know, just because there is an there's unfortunately not like a lot of money in businesses conserving the ocean, it's something that um, you know we're, we're doing as as a nonprofit. But we're we're taking the same approach. Is my is my primary point is that we're we're we're, we're treating this as a as a systematic issue that. Um, software has a place um, to 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 help um, uh, in the solution of. So, 
you know, Aqualink is, is essentially a system that integrates data from a variety of different sensors, models, satellite observations, surveys, images, and video to give you an instant view of your ecosystem. You know, this this information, um, the, the system is is um, available for anybody to view at aqualink.org, and I'm sure that many of you have. But if you haven't, take a look at a variety of different, different sites. We've also integrated um, a whole bunch of sensors for automated data collection. So, you know, think of this as a software package that comes with built in support for a variety of different sensors. So far, Spotter provides real time telemetry, primarily for, uh, for, for weather related information like wind, waves, and, and temperature. Fathom Video is a um, video system that gives you the ability to uh, broadcast, you know, real time, uh, high resolution video from, um, from, from from a reef. It also is uh, machine vision enabled. So if you are interested in developing machine learning modules, um, models to uh, do um, you know, coral or uh, fish species recognition, please let us know. This is still at the point where you do need to run wires all the way into the camera. Um, uh, so it's, you know, it's, it's not as easy to deploy as a spotter. It needs to be, you know, quite close to, um, you know, a location that does have uh, internet and, and, and power. So it's a little bit difficult to deploy for now, but I think that in a couple of years, there will be uh, pretty good um, options for being able to do open ocean um, um, real-time video observations. Then we also realize that there's a lot of other information that needs to be collected. Um, so we have an integration with the Exo multi-parameter sonde, and this gives you the ability to collect uh, things like pH, dissolved oxygen, um, alkalinity, and so on. And then we also are backwards compatible with you know, the, the Hobo temperature loggers so that we, we understand that there's a lot of surveys that have been done with, um, with Hobo temperature loggers, and we have the ability to support um, uh, uploading all of that information into Aqualink. Um, you know, the, the, the platform has this capability of being able to upload almost any CSV data. You know, we, we, we need to have a standardized um, list of, of, of header and, um, and, and so, so either variable or header names, but once you have a spreadsheet that has been structured in that way, you can upload it into Aqualink and take advantage of a lot of the Different capabilities that the platform has. Um, you know, again, like what, what, what was clear, pretty clear to us when we were looking at the way that surveys were done was that it wasn't being done in a very structured way. We wanted to be able to um, create the ability for people to be able to easily conduct the surveys based on best practices and then also correlate those surveys to specific data. So, you know, the idea is that if you're surveying a reef on a, on a, off, on a frequent basis, you'd want to see how, what it looked like at 29 degrees C. And what does it look like if it's been, um, you know, exposed to 31 degrees C for four weeks? If you go to the exact same survey point um, and, you, and, you, and you take a picture from the same angle using a color card, you're going to be able to understand, you know, what is happening um, in, to, to your marine ecosystems under different temperature uh, temperature conditions. And that, and that, of course, is true for other data elements as well. But the key point is just that, you know, there's that, 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 that it's a structured system for um, doing surveys um, and that you can correlate these surveys to, to data. Um, we're also investing heavily in um, APIs, and this is to make it so that it's incredibly easy to be able to access this, this data. Um, here's some um, Python code that shows uh, on the left um, the ability to just access temperature data um, for a specific site for a complete year. Um, and, then, and then another one that, that um, we've invested a fair amount of time in is um, a solution to the problem of trying to aggregate um, you know, data coming aggregate data that was sampled at different timing intervals. This was a very common issue that, that, that we saw. And so we're giving an example of how one could be able to uh, quickly analyze the difference between, you know, in situ, um, uh, you know, uh, temperature information that's, that's, that's collected, um, you know, every 10 minutes and satellite temperature that is only collected daily. Um, but of course, like this, you'd be able to do this across, um, you know, dissolved oxygen, and temperature, you could do it um, across like dissolved oxygen and and um, changes in in pressure, which may be coming from tidal um, from 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 tide changes. But the point is just that if you've got a whole bunch of telemetry and possibly models with um, you know collected at different time intervals, we're 
we have an API that gives you the ability to summarize those and aggregate them so that they're easy to analyze. Um, the newest capability in version two, again, is the ability to analyze information um, beyond temperature. So, you know, the first thing is that all the data that you're collecting, that you're collecting can, now, can now be uploaded and stored. So like, instead of actually having all, this, all of these CSV files in a random, um, uh, you know, Google Drive somewhere, you'll be able to have them on the website and you'll be able to see information um, on them as well as the date range that were captured in them. And then that, this is also, so, sorry, the, the, the date range of the data. And then on the Aqualink site page themselves, you'll be able to um, see um, the, 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 the data plotted, including a, you know, brief statistical analysis um, of, of, of the data collected um, during, that, during that time period. But again, the big, the big change in you, uh, that, that's, that that's happened in version two is the ability to um, uh, analyze and upload data beyond, beyond temperature. Um, you know, this, uh, all, all of the, the Aqualink software is totally open source and it's free to use um, globally. Um, there's a link to the repo on aqualink.org. So if you wanna take a look at the code and understand how we're doing things, um, take a look. The reason why I think it's really important um, to have a system like this be open source is that I do believe that there are people who are going to be using the platform um, to try to start drawing conclusions about experiments that they may be making. And um, I think that transparency um, is, 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 is essential um, for any organization that is interested in um, you know, beginning to do things like conduct enhanced alkalinity experiments or anything like that. In, in, in any, any, any organization that wants to study the ocean and wants society to draw meaningful conclusions from it, um, I think that it needs to be coming from a, a, a um, position of like total transparency. So that's, that's why we're, we're um, it's open source. Um, another reason, of course, is that we'd love for uh, a big community to start developing on top of the platform. If there's so, if there are extensions that you'd like to make to it, um, uh, please um, let us know and we'll, you know, help, help you, um, you know, make these contributions and, ch and check them into our repo. Also, you know, all the data is open. So if, if you have a specific, um, uh, you know, idea on how you could apply this data, um, you know, it's, it's available. Um, let, let us know and we may be able to help you. And then also lastly, like this whole system is, is totally free. Um, you know, it's, it's funded um, by, by myself and my brother. And um, it's really easy to create an account and start monitoring any marine ecosystem um, around the planet. Um, so, so far it's, it's, it's been used by a ton of um, different uh, organizations. So we have about 560 sites in the platform and about 312 organizations, um, you know, across a variety of different types of industries. We have some of the most promising, uh, so sorry, some of the most prominent universities on the planet that have active, um, uh, you know, marine research, uh, or actually, I almost think that as a like responsibility for monitoring specific marine ecosystems. We have them using the platform. We have a lot of startups. We have coral nurseries. We have Project VESA that is working on, um, you know, in, in enhanced weathering for accelerating, um, you know, carbon capture through alkalinity enhancement. And then of course, um, you know, a whole bunch of uh, NGOs. So a variety of different companies are using the platform right now. Um, and we're, you know, just want to continue to, to, to serve them and, and uh, um, build features that they'll be able to, to use. Um, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Caesar. Maybe you can just give us a couple of um, examples of customers that are using the platform. Yes. Thank you, Pete. Um, so, yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Caesar, and I'll talk a little bit about some of our Aqualink users. So here in this picture, you can see one of our amazing customers that we are very proud to work with. And this is the Peld ELOC team from an island outside Brazil. Uh, and although there are many customers that we would love to highlight, the Peld ELOC team is one of those customers that bring the best out of our partnership. Uh, they used other temperature monitoring devices in the past, which limited their research output because they could only access data once or twice a year uh, when the devices were like picked up from the site. 
Aqualink now gives them an assistant to collect and track real-time data, which helps them to continuously assess the processes that are driving these dynamics in the reef ecosystem, all within their dashboard. Uh, the open source data from their buoy is also shared with other scientists and community members, uh, such as surfers and companies. On top of that, they also upload excellent surveys to the Aqualink dashboard, which we encourage all of our um, users to do. And if you want to learn more about what uh, the Pelt ELOG team is doing with Aqualink, please check out our new stories section in the website where you can find more highlights uh, of sites that we've done. And we will continue doing this with more sites in the future. Uh, so next slide, please. Oh, that's me. Sorry. There we yes. go. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so here we can see the Charles Darwin Foundation from the Galapagos Island. And they recently recently went through a heat wave. And the system from Aqualink and their buoy helped them to track the entire event, both at one meter and at 80 meters depth. So here is a quote from them. Uh, this information is vital for the monitoring and analysis of the coral reef's health and helps us to better understand the relation between the coral reef's health and the oceanographic condition it experiences, hopefully aiding us in managing the long-term survivability of such an important and now rare ecosystem in the Galapagos. And they actually only have one reef left that is healthy, and they had 17 before, so they had a big loss in the past. So we're trying the best to really monitor this last ecosystem in the Darwin Island. Um, back to you, Pete. Cool. Thanks, Cesar. Um, so I wanted to um, just uh, show a couple of these screens um, live. So the, give me one second. Uh, the first one is just to show what it looks like when you've collected some of this other water quality data. So the first thing is that you'll notice that the the one of the cards that in the in the, in, the, in 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 the palms would be showing heat stress now actually shows the specific readings that were gathered in during the lost survey, survey. So in this case, we have dissolved oxygen, chlorophyll, acidity, salinity, and those are shown as of the lost survey date. And then as we scroll down, um, we see the data that was uploaded at at a glance. Of course, you can download this via via CSV if you wanted to, but it gives somebody the ability to at a glance, you know, see all of these values as well as statistical summary on the right. Um, then if you, um, sorry, one sec. If I look at how the data is uploaded, there's, if you click on the upload data, you'll see that what you would do is you would select the survey point that you had configured and the sensor type. So either SONS, meteorological data, the HOBO data, and then, and then press the upload. Once it was uploaded, that, that data file would be here um, for you to be able to either you know, delete and then re-upload or to be able to click on a specific date range to then see that information that was present in that file on the Aqualink um, website. The, um, the, 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 and, and I see there was a question about how we actually do the integration with the XL1. So you know, what, what you do is you take the, CSV file that comes straight out of the sound and you essentially just upload that. So, you know, at some time in the future, we are hoping that a sound will have um, direct interface with the spotter um, so that this information can be sent um, in real time. But until then, you know, you have to retrieve the sound and then you have to download the, the CSV file and then it, you know, what we have is we've configured um, Aqualink to map all of these different headers um, uh, to, uh, to, 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 the, to, to the right database columns in our relational database, which in turn are then displayed on the Aqualink site. Um, Want to also just highlight the ability for people to be able to create, create a dashboard of a whole bunch of different sites. So just think of this as a, as a favorites, but what we um, intended to do here is that if there's a whole bunch of locations that you are interested in, 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 in monitoring on an ongoing basis, you can easily just add that as a favorite um, when you look at the site and then it will give you the summary view 
for you to be able to um, look and see at a glance which of the the, the, the sites um, may be experiencing some some heat stress, or it's also just a good way for you to just very quickly you know click into a, another site and then that you know you're, you're tracking for whatever reason and then take a look at it. just it's almost like a bookmark um in a way but it's 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 pretty useful that way um also wanted to, want, wanted to give you um show you an example of a large um survey that was done in palau where somebody had like the the, 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 the group here had um you know i, I think close to like about 70 um, hobos in the in, in the water hobo temp local temperature loggers in the water for for close to a year and they also conducted a pretty thorough um, photographic survey of all of palau and then we were able to import this data and it's available now so if you if you have a similar large-scale um survey um you know please please let us know um, and we can help you import it into the aqualink uh, platform um, so now, so, so, so that was, um, you know, all I really wanted to try to demonstrate at this point. I think that we're at the, at the point where we could probably go to some of the um, Q&A. Todd, does that sound right? Um, yeah, that's and, good. I, and, I, and I see the questions in front of me now, so I can just take them. So it looks like we have um, a question from um, Samapriya. Um, do all the sites have all the sensor types? Um, or is it full? So, so right now you can set, you can, so um, if you go to the um, homepage, you can send you, you can filter by those sites that have deployed buoys only. Okay. And then if you have a specific site for different data types, you actually have to go with like you typically know about them um, where you you're maybe involved in an experiment that's happening. But at this point, if you wanted to say, just find the sites that we have dissolved oxygen for, there's no way yet um, that you can, from the primary web page, get just those sites. That's a good idea for something that we should, should develop, um, especially as more and more people start uploading you know, non-temperature information. So is there a commit log for files or version control if people are reloading the updated file? So um, the commit log is what we showed um, before, which was here. And then you have the ability, if you wanted to, to delete that, make the lo local file modification, and then re-upload it. Um, there is, there's an opportunity here to you know, do to write a little bit of a user guide um, for how you can upload the data and also include the list of header names that we're supporting. Um, so, so, so we'll take that on. Um, is there so? There's another question about: Is there any ability to search across sites based on specific parameters, bottom sensor depth? No, not at this point. I can't, I can't think of a good use case for you know, say, searching for all locations where you know, the temperature is less than 15 degrees or anything like that. So at this point, we're primarily um, searching for, um, you know, like giving somebody the ability to go to a specific site. The, 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 the idea behind the system is that we're trying, to, we're trying to create a tool for an individual that has responsibility for an individual site. Um, there are some features for being able to analyze the data in aggregate. Um, it isn't the primary use case that that we built the platform for but if that's important to the user base we can definitely do it then there's a question about how we integrate with the xl1 and i think i, I described that by showing the spreadsheet and the screen so i'll assume that that's answered um, and then there's a question about how an api looks integrated into a, other, other website oh um give me one sec um well actually let, let me see if there's i'm gonna um stop well, sorry, there is an example where there's a, the call of gardeners actually took the um, uh, the data from spotter and then overlaid it directly onto a video feed. I, I can't quickly bring it up, um, but I, I know that there like that, that's the one example I can think of. But the API is not just intended for displaying information on the web, web page. The way we're thinking about it is um, also just for um, for for data. Um, analysis or trying to get 
um, certain correlations and so on. Um, I'm trying to see whether or not there are any other questions. Has anybody been monitoring the chat log to see if there's any questions, other questions? Yeah, it looks like the, the one question that you just answered was, was actually posted in the chat initially. But, um, and I think for some of the technical details, Zach sent some links to them. So feel free to look in the chat. Okay. Okay, great. Well, I mean, I think that that's, that, that's pretty much it. Um, and, uh, you know, what we'd love to um, hear from all of you is, is what, what else we could develop that would be useful um, to you in, in managing your marine ecosystem. So there's going to be a brief survey, um, you know, after this call. And if uh, you guys could just let us know um, uh, what, what capabilities you'd like added to the platform, that'd be great. And then, so there's one other question about are in situ data loggers compatible? Yes. So, you know, if, so, so at this point, we're primarily focusing on multi-parameter SONs and, and EXO specifically, but it is, it is essentially as simple as just, you know, having a new mapping between, um, you know, your, your column headers and then our internal variables. So if you have other in situ data loggers that you'd like to upload the data of, please, please um, reach out and let us know. Great. Well, I think that's it. So really appreciate everyone's time. Um, thank you very much. That's good. Thanks for everyone for joining. And we will have a recording that will, uh, once it's uh, processed, we'll send out to the team. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you.